Welcome to Phase, Patrick. Hello. Can you Hi, hear me? Patrick. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Welcome. Nice to meet Hi. you. Thank you. Same, same here, sir. It's great to meet you. I appreciate you taking time to be with us today. And uh, Will I you went be setting your screen, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, there's a green button for a screen share, Patrick. All right. Let me know when that, that shows up. It shows up. Yeah, cool. you okay. can see it. Okay. Perfect. Enjoy. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> you, you know, I, I went there uh, to your website. I have to ask you uh, first Silver about... Silver $360. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, any, I didn't hear any people falling off their chair right now. <laughs> I went. Uh, I went. Wild. I know one thing for sure. I'm going to retire for for life uh, if that happens. Stelios the same. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be in the, and by that's going to be great. Twenty eight. No, no. Um, final twenty thirty or so. Well, yeah, not that long to wait for that. Um, let me ask you this: your handle. Why bad charts? Is it like that movie with uh, Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder where they walk into a prison, they get arrested, and they go, we bad, we bad, <laughs> you know, that your charts are not bad, they're bad. Well, it's, uh, it's weird. I, have, like, I haven't been asked that question too often, but it was kind of the, my mindset I had in, in back, you know? It's like... Um, state something that sh I should try to disprove and show that actually the charts are good. And um, yeah, it's just like, yeah, there's just like bad charts. It has, it's, uh, and I just, I mentioned to one of my friends back in the days uh, when I, like I said, I'm going to start like maybe branding a little bit my, um, what I'm trying to do. And uh, when I said that bad charts says, yeah, Pat, I think uh, you got something good there. And, yeah, it's uh, an attention grabber. You know, so uh, yeah. very creative. Uh, so before you did that, I'm interested, Patrick, in a little bit about your journey and how you got from point A to bad charts. Uh, uh, what were you doing before you got into the trading business? And uh, tell us about what it was like for you, uh, maybe your first uh, entry and position and experience in trading. Yeah. It's, I hope my memory uh, recalls this correctly, but um, I remember like in the mid nineties there, I had like a couple thousand dollars where my, uh, my, my mother's boyfriend, he says, look, Patrick, he, let's put that money uh, somewhere like, uh, and he brought me to this, uh, just the bottom mutual funds or, uh, but uh, in technology, but I, like mm -hmm. I was maybe 14, 15, 16, I knew nothing about like uh, technical analysis back then. And then it just uh, 2000, I said, okay, I'm going to buy a house. And then I needed like a cash down and that 2000, like I sold probably close to the top of the dot-com bubble without realizing it just because I needed money for a down payment for a house. And then I, when I saw like uh, the returns, I think I had tenfolded uh, that 2000. It was a nice cash down for my first house. And then I started uh, like getting the, um, the bug. I said, oh, this is like uh, kind of cool, you know. Uh, I didn't do much <laughs> thousand trading. percent I returns are pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, well, doing that like nothing. Like sometimes I think, what am I doing all these charts for? Maybe I should just uh, be stupid, just buy like uh, buy the the index and go to sleep, you know. But I know what I know now after like uh, rabbit hole after rabbit hole. I want to. I don't want to give my money out to like a fund manager and him deal deal with it, and they don't know how to sell. You know, they never tell you when to sell. Uh, like perfect example, like two thousand eight, there and there. I had nobody in my family that their 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 bankster or their the fund manager told them to sell. It's all hang in there, hang in there. Yeah. But uh, just yeah, to get back. Sorry, I got a, off on a tangent. But and then after that, like in two thousand six, penny stocks. I, I started having like regular income. Like I'm a I'm a Linux Unix engineer by by trade. I, I still okay. do it today. I'm a consultant in the in the system engineering. I still do it today actively. Okay. And, uh, but I started to have inflows of uh, money and I said, I got to do something with it, but open an E-Trade account. But then I was on all these penny stock forums. And I think a lot of newbies, they, they don't know anything about Forex. They don't know anything about technical analysis. They go on a stock forum and uh, this guy's uh, pumping, dumping uh, these stocks. Like it's a miracle. I haven't been wiped out multiple times already. I like every time I slept at night and I couldn't, uh, I was like, uh, something's wrong. My instinct, the next morning I sold. And thank God, I like I followed my instincts back in those days. 
And then the big game changer was when I read the book, uh, Stan Weinstein's um, Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets. I don't know if you guys okay. uh, read I remember book. him. Yep. Wow. My generation. Time, yeah. Yeah. Like notions of uh, it doesn't matter the fundamentals, read the price action. Uh, there was a concepts of uh, money management there. And from, from there on, it was like, I shorted the, maybe two, I was still ignorant. I shorted the 2008 um, crash uh, without doing too much uh, macro. I didn't understand what was happening. And I was lucky back then, uh, like uh, the Fed or the interventions, they weren't as strong. They, like, they picked up maybe in like in uh, 2009. I got a good yeah. ride there. And after that, I just, I switched to, um, I just like always have a curiosity. I need to try new things. And I move away from equities into Forex. So for many years, I did uh, just Forex, Forex. And uh, what else? After that, I spinned off into futures, commodities. Uh, and here I am today there in the precious bull market, which, for, um, which is a couple of years back when I saw that gold, everybody's looking at gold and US dollars. And it, the chart wasn't too good, like in 2016, 17 Eight, even 18, it started like, it, like you were seeing a bottom, but when you went to look at gold and other currencies like Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, wow, these, these things like were breaking out on monthly charts, quarterly charts, all-time highs. I said, look, something's up. And uh, I started sniffing around. And then I met these guys like uh, Northstar, uh, another, Twitter, another Twitter handle where he was experimenting the same things with different uh, currencies. And I said, look, there's a... Uh, I think finally I have, I'm like kind of seeing the future, not like, it was like kind of my crystal ball, look, fiat currencies, they're all debasing. Uh, if you study a little bit or follow Mike Maloney's uh, history of money there or currencies, uh, eventually if they're not backed by anything, they, their intrinsic value is zero. It's like, it's a cliche, but it, that's what's happening. Even I don't know if you guys know the, the, the website priced in gold. I don't. There's there's a website pricing gold and then he has all the charts of everything but pricing goals. So a Big Mac, how much did it, how much does it cost you in micrograms of gold uh, and all that? And he has a great chart. It's a half decay of the U.S. dollar and uh, the half life of the U.S. dollar. And since 2000 2004, it's been like almost on a perfect track to to zero. So the the half life every four years it loses half of its uh, value. It kind of stalled. When gold starts, like from 2012 to 2018, 19, it kind of went sideways. But right now, I think with this next leg up in the precious bull market, uh, it's kind of, uh, we're going to kind of see the US dollar there go to uh, yikes, like uh, zero. Like it's hard to believe that, you know, but it's, uh, we see yeah, that. I, day, I, right? I mean, uh, that, you know, uh, I thought that looking at the Dixie maybe going under 50 was uh, kind of a, you know, catastrophic call, losing half its value from here. Um, do you look at, you know, when I'm in the market, Patrick, I look at what the other side is saying and what their uh, reasoning is, rationale for their narrative. Have you taken a look at what dollar bulls are saying as far as things like dollar shortages because of uh, a lot of debt being denominated in dollars, uh, especially from emerging markets, um, that there could be, you know, one more uh, big spike up in the dollar before uh, we have uh, a big bear market. Do you look at what their argument says and uh, uh, have you considered it? And I'm wondering if there's any area technically in the market, like the dollar, um, say it got back above 97, that your scenario could be correct, but just put on hold for a while? Well, I try to, uh, I always hear like narratives for, to, for people to try to justify their, uh, like why the price movement would happen. But I remember, I think it's Peter Brandt. He said one time, by the time you realize the narrative, the true narrative of the, those long-term like macro flows, why something moves in a certain direction, it's too late. I forget there's a term for that, like theory. So yeah. okay. I, 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 I listen to the theories, the milkshake and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I look at the chart because somebody has that theory. Somebody else has the inverse theory. But at the end of the day, it's all those um, 
concatenated theories put together and the money behind that, all that buying and selling, we'll see the truth in the chart. Like, yeah. I like a nice story tabletop, uh, t- uh, like a coffee table discussion with the family and arguing and all that. But this, what we see here, this is my best tool at the end of the day is the price action. But what I've noticed like recently for, yes, for to justify like, let's say US dollar spike, a US dollar spike, a VIX spike, a gold to silver ratio spike, all those spikes, they happen in the liquidity crunches. Well, at least they happened in 2008, they happened in 2018 Good point. and 2020. So me, that the only worry I have, yes, we might have a spike. I don't know. Do you guys see my mouse when I move it? Yeah. Okay. So let's say we do have a spike, but the, the US dollar could be here. Like my target's around 80, 85 right now for this next bear leg. Even if it spikes, it could spike like from down here up to here, and it'll just be a lower high in a down in a downtrend in a like this is a monthly candle trend in a downtrend. So I'm not kind of too worried about it. It could just be um, I like going on the higher time frames, mm-hmm. and that could just be a wick that's gonna last maybe a two, three, four weeks un- until they start printing more money or whatever. Like it's gonna drive it down. So if doom and gloom, it's never gonna help you make money. There's a gold ventures, another Twitter handle. And he's so right, like emotion management. If you're always fearing of that next crash, of that next black swan, you're, you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna you're be paralyzed. Un- paralyzed, yeah. So what's the the use, you know? And like I love Peter Schiff and all that. I listen to his podcast, but it's not tradable advice. You can't action on that. What I could action on is me looking through different technical analysis, through different tools, always trying to use different indicators, match and match, look at the landscape, and see when everything like's in sync then I know I have increased probabilities of my possible move happening. You know, it's not hundred percent, but that's the, that's actual mar- market participants there. Like what we see in the price action, all the rest, it gets views, clicks, but it's, uh, it, it's tough actioning on that. Okay. Like, yeah. This is like the gold chart with the, the U S uh, the relationship with the U S dollar and the Swiss franc. You could see it like, we're really just starting a cycle right here, 2016, 18, started going up and they're both breaking out on the monthly chart. So you got even currencies now backing up the move and that we're in a precious metals bull market, a commodities bull market, gold sniffing out, all this uh, monetary imbalances, what, whatever, like uh, negative yields, all that. It's all aligning, all coming together. And we're not early. Well, we're at the beginning innings, but the real early is the guys that were here in 2016. That was like really the time to get in. But right now, it's really gaining momentum, gaining steam. And you can't really so, easily change these, these trends. Right. So you have a 16 and a quarter year cycle. That's going to take us where out to 2033? For the from US this last East- low we had? Yeah, for the USD, Swiss franc, uh, yeah. it brings me and out gold. there. Yeah. So it depends where it peaks. Sometimes it peaks right translated of a, of a cycle. Sometimes it peaks, uh, it could be peak in the middle. But it, it's never like uh, 100%. You know, people look at sometimes on Twitter, I'm all over the place, targets 300, 250. But you kind of got to take all these, um, these targets and time to reach those targets, I would like put them in a scatter chart and then you could see where most of them land. And that's probably the, um, like the most probable outcome to happen, you know? Cause we, somebody's like gold 2000 or uh, silver 300, no, nobody knows for sure, but you could keep looking through different view, different angles and try to accumulate evidence. And then when they all start pointing towards the same direction and uh, then you know you have increased chances yeah, it's like uh, an attorney uh, confluence is evidence. Oh, I like that. Could I quote that? I'll still. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like I always try different views, and then um, here's like my I call this a super arc. So this look, this is an arc from uh, for silver that that's thirty years, sixty years almost in the making. And uh, I know this at the bottom here. Yeah, I'm a little dyslexic, so I wrote gold vs gold vs, but that's like actually gold versus SPX ratio. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in this chart. But when my first target right now for silver would probably be sixty dollars. I don't know exactly when, twenty late twenty twenty one, maybe earlier, maybe. But around that area, we should be hitting that important resistance line around the sixty dollar. 
And after that, after that big pullback, and that big pullback could be your black swan event there where that US dollar spike, it could happen maybe in 2023. So, you know, like uh, you could fit any story. I love telling a story and charts. You could fit any type of narratives to, to try to justify why it would pull back down here. But eventually that's what I'm looking at, a retest of that breakout line here. And then after that, parabolic mode, everybody is a millionaire. I don't know who on the line said that, uh, so we could all retire in 2027 there, 2028 before we the, the bull cycle ends. <laughs> okay. All right. I like your work. It's very interesting. Um, you know, your formations and your methods, your, uh, uh, yeah, look at that. So here you have, uh, is this a monthly? This yeah. is a yearly chart. Yearly. Okay. And what's insane Each candle about this, is a year? Yeah. Reduce okay. noise. I love reducing noise. Yeah. And okay. It's a log chart. So usually log charts, you can't sustain a, a, like a high degree incline, right? Because if you go on the linear, you probably see a, a bubble happening or parabolic uh, advance. But look at gold. This is gold. And then it's like a buff. My target's like 6,500 in 2027. Like another evidence that that measured move pinpoints exactly towards the end of those other cycles from those other charts, that other evidence. And it's on track. It's right below that line. So I expect it even to overshoot here in the next year and then and zigzag all the way all, all the way up here. And if you really want to fall off your chair, look, this is gold that did exact that did that exact measure move, but in the Turkish lira. So that's a currency that that's going down the drain. And guys, like we're we're probably uh, like we're just beginning beginning the, this write up. It's like Jesus, if you don't own gold or something, some hard assets. Unless something drastically changes there, that this is a type, this is where all fiat currencies are going essentially. Kind of mind boggling okay. when you see that. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, the implications of um, some of your work, besides being able to make a lot of money um, on these moves, and I'm assuming you, you also like some of the miners, and maybe SILJ is. Uh, an ETF of uh, silver junior miners. Uh, I'm not sure if. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you follow that. Yeah. Um, uh, so you make a lot of money. Um, you know, gold's six thousand and silver's three fifty. Um, where are you going to live during this time frame? Because I would say that um, there most likely would be you know kind of a a breakdown on many levels of society with, uh, you know, uh, and we have historical examples like as recently, I mean, you could go to South America and see how people have navigated currency collapses before. Um, do you live here in the States? Uh, I live in uh, Quebec, Canada. Oh, okay. Okay. You're in Canada. All right. So um, you in a populated area? No, no, North Shore of Montreal. So I'm in like in a small city, uh, suburbs where there's maybe 20, 30,000 uh, inhabitants. Okay. okay. So are, I mean, uh, I, are you a preppy? I mean, if you're looking for these kind of things to uh, prepper, no. not a preppy. A preppy is a, different, a prepper, <laughs> uh, you know, that's uh, getting ready for a world that, you know, isn't going to be um, the one we're used to living in. Uh, what are you doing to prepare you and your family for, you know, uh, besides making money, being long physical assets? Um, uh, are there any other preparations people should make besides being long uh, precious metals in, in the world that you're projecting? Well, I'm not there yet. I know there's some um, uh, right now, like I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm not really there yet in the preparations for uh, like uh, stocking up on cans of food and uh, all that. Okay. Uh, it's kind of in the back of my mind, but like it's not. I mean, what do you think food's going to cost when well, silver is uh, three fifty? Well, everything's going to uh, double, triple. It's going to follow because yeah. like even a pint of milk. Like my girlfriend when she goes shopping, let's say it's like I have two two children. I said, hey, honey, how, how much is it for a week? She's like $300 Canadian. I said, what? And my, in my head, I had my mom coming back uh, in the 80s or 90s, costing $100 for a family of four. And now, right. now it's like 300 
but it, it's yeah. gradual, Dale. Everything's gradual. Yeah. It's the, your, the threshold of noticeability is so low that it sneaks up on you. Like my right. salary hasn't uh, tripled uh, in those years, you know? So it's my purchasing power that's going down and down. And the only yeah. way I could like have the goods that I, I think I, I'm entitled to, I have to go get a loan at the bank, you know? Big mortgage, yeah. big everything. And it's... What do you, I well, yeah. I mean, you're up there in Canada and, you know, I trade the loony. Uh, what do you think is the future for the Canadian dollar? Zero like the U.S. dollar? Well... Okay, if you measure them against gold, they're all going to zero. But if you measure okay. them one against the other, the loonie is going to drastically outperform uh, the U.S. The dollar from here on out. So if there's a VIX spike, the, the loonie is going to get crashed. But uh, for the, it's going to follow like the gold chart. So the loonie is going back to, uh, I think I had something like um, uh, maybe $1.60 U.S. It, it's really going back up high. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've heard those targets bandied about. 160. So you're probably constructive of some of the other commodity currencies, like all of them. I have to have to have yeah. charts on um, on pretty much all uh, long term currencies. I have to get gather evidence. So here's my chart. We just starting a bull cycle. This is a monthly chart, yeah. and uh, we should be going a lot higher for uh, the Canadian dollar versus. Uh, the, the greenback, the Australian dollar, same thing, same, same type of, um, same type of breakout for the US D versus Australian dollar. There's huge, huge Australian dollar versus US dollar just breaking out of these uh, important uh, uh, decade long uh, cycles. This is an exhaustion uh, low. Yeah. You yeah. can't get clearer Both than that. It. You yeah. think it here? I remember in March, I couldn't even buy silver in March. I was scared. I thought it was the end of the world. <laughs> no, like I, uh, I, I know the, the, what, you couldn't buy physical. Yeah, you like. Uh, well, I know what I mean. Is I couldn't pull the trigger. I thought like oh, I see zero. I thought like silver's going down to five bucks. I thought like yeah. gold's going imploding. It's yeah. like ho human emotions right here. Unless like you're a veteran of trading and you you, you know what you're doing, you, you say no, Pat. This is a uh, uh, this is actually Buy great. When the blood's on the streets, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here too, 2008, okay. blood on the streets. That's probably the best time to go long Australian dollar versus US dollar. Okay, some real nice work. So, uh, what's your business model? Um, are you guys mentors? Uh, you have a subscription service for your charts. Uh, maybe this is a good time to uh, show your website, unless you had some other markets you wanted to cover. So. Um, I know I'd be interested in wow. following you and I, you know, really think that your presentation was excellent. So go ahead. Oh, oh you want to show copper? Uh, copper, yeah, copper, um, copper is another one. It's all about the dollar. Every time, uh, you have to look at always gather evidence, gather, gather evidence, see if everything uh, fits. If something starts not fitting, then you have to uh, to take that into account. Here's another fun I had with uh, smart money versus dumb money. It's yeah. it's a reference to I don't know if you guys do some uh, positive volume uh, analysis. Positive volume index is every time the price action goes up on the increasing volume day, it's in this index. Every time the the price uh, every time the volume goes down, then the price action movement is in the negative volume index. So it it's said the that smart money buys on declining volume days, on declining vo uh, volatility, and the, the crowd money gets in on breakouts, on increasing volume days. And when you have both together, that means your price action is increasing on decreasing and increasing volume days, you get strong moves. And here's copper, copper, and look at that, smart money yeah. and crowd money getting in together, even copper here. Like I thought copper would never get back here. here. I thought it it bombed way before, but look, that's what's happening. I have a measured yeah. move to about uh, above four dollars there for copper. Okay, um, a view on the S and P's uh, with this debasement move. Are they going to, you know, blow off with a uh, weakening dollar for a while? That should be helpful, but don't you think we'll reach a point where, um, you know, uh, financial assets are under pressure because no one trusts fiat anymore it's um 
the nominally, I think U.S. equities uh, are going to stagnate. So they're, they're probably going to have maybe a, like a blow off top uh, soon, but they're either going to crash, correct. But I kind of see like, uh, I'm starting to like research that it could be like the 1960s, 50s, where the U.S. market just went sideways. It went down yeah. and up, but it never right. did anything. 20 yeah. years, I think. Yeah, it did, it did nothing. So, and what I'm trying to find is my uh, gold to silver, um, gold to Dow Jones chart or silver to Dow Jones chart. And what you'll see is gold is. or silver is going to outperform the Dow or the SPX or the, or the NASDAQ for the next 10 years. So whatever, okay. what you do is you, um, if you're going to go long something, just go long uh, precious metals or commodities because they will outperform whatever nominal. So even if the, the NASDAQ uh, goes to 100,000 and the Dow to a, a million, well, gold is going to, percentage-wise, is going to have a higher value than that. Do you follow grains? You can't eat gold and silver. Yeah, I do. I follow all the grains. Sugar. Well, sugar is like my inflation-sensitive asset. So this one yeah. has a strong relationship to, to gold. Right. Uh, so, so if sugar pops up, you know that you're really like really sits out inflation and the silver is, uh, sorry, sugar is really uh, popping up on a multiple of type of analysis uh, that I, I do. Sugar is uh, going to explode. And when it's going to explode, it, it really goes like uh, parabolic there. Even in the seventies there, you see how it, it, it pops up. And right now, gold's like leading the ways, like the, the pioneer, the first guy to go in the forest and, Hey guys, yeah. if something's up and then silver follows, the miners follow sugar. Then after that, Hey, I want in on this uh, inflation stuff. And uh, sugar definitely is a, a big one. And even recently I did a uh, wheat. Yeah. A wheat's quarterly chart. Even look on the quarterly chart, this thing, this, uh, the chalk in uh, money flow. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's moving up and here's like the volume. I call this volume defined the uh, support or resistance and we're above it. So this is the price action, the volume for this price action range and we're sliding up. It's a, it's a vacuum up here. So nothing's stopping this from going up to 860 there uh, or high, at least higher up. You know, it's not going to go in a straight line, but even wheat is the cost of wheat is sniffing out. Um, yeah. All the got, grains. Yeah. Well, I looked, I don't know whose uh, screen I saw before, um, we started this, but uh, the in trading view on the right there, most of those stickers that uh, you guys are following is the same list of stuff I'm following. <laughs> okay. Even look look at soya beans. Soya yeah. beans, another one, a bull, um, flag, pull, yeah. flag, uh, crazy target up here. It's not crazy. It's not, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't. I should take that word out. It's it's a measured move. It's a probability, and but everything's aligning for that until the price reverts and shows me something else. Look at yeah. this huge base right here. It's like we're, yeah. we're we're sliding above it. So this is the next target here, fourteen hundred, maybe a crash uh, or a, a, some severe correction here, and then after that, uh, up up and away. Okay, um, what was your um, the year and the target you have in the silver super cycle? One more time. Okay, so uh, your so, first chart that uh, okay. had has yeah. This one here. yeah. Sorry. There it is. 365. Sorry. Yeah. So by uh, 2028. Yeah. So yes, precious metals, they usually like go parabolic and then they crash to it. Their cycle yeah. lows really fast. So we're, I'm expecting this to be closer towards the end of that cycle that is going to end later this decade. So yeah, it's going to melt up uh, 2028. Okay. okay. Uh, All right. It's going to, it's going to go, uh, when you, everybody you know is going to want to get in silver, Dale, that's when you sell. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen it a few times. I'm a, a little older than you. But yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the bunker hunt squeeze. So wow. that's how far back I go. Um, so, Patrick, uh, you know, after an interview with me, you know what you become, even though you're already a great technical trader, you know what you are now? No. My trading warrior brother. Oh, I like it. Yes. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm my trading warrior brother at Bad Charts One. So, um, you know, you can follow Patrick at Bad Chart One Charts Plural on Twitter. And you want to give your website address out too? Sure, it's uh, just uh, badcharts.com. It's okay. there's nothing. 
everything that I do is on um, is on Twitter. But uh, on Bad Charts, uh, I have a YouTube channel where I do in-depth uh, 10, 20, 30 minutes. When I think that like some of the charts I do uh, merit a, a narrative, like some deep, more explanation, then okay. you, could, you could go in here. Like I reviewed the uh, Don Duret's uh, top uh, gold silver stocks for 40 minutes. You could listen to that and see my process. And okay. you, could, uh, you could, yeah, go have fun there. This is like a good place to... Uh, Okay. Yeah, you have some nice stuff there. Do you have uh, quickly a view on Bitcoin? Yeah, Bitcoin uh, up, up in a way. It's like like I know like gold bugs they get mad at me. You know, like you're not supposed to like Bitcoin, but since <laughs> I, I look at the charts, me what I, I see a chart, they're very analogous uh, fractal movements. So Ethereum is the same as silver, and Bitcoin is the same as gold, but on a condensed time frame. So if you look at the fractal of what Ethereum's doing, it's doing the same thing that Silver's doing, but faster. And I want to see these two go up. Uh, I want Ethereum's going to outperform uh, Bitcoin, just like Silver's going to outperform Bitcoin. Um, I don't know if I oh, can show you. Yeah. I don't know how much time, I, but um, bad charts. Uh, Bit BTC. I'm just going to show you this chart, which is pretty insane. Okay, yeah, this chart. See, this is Bitcoin and gold. I the, like the time frames. I, I had to to condense them, but yeah. look at this fractal. It's just insane. It's like yeah. it, it, they're behaving the same. And here's yeah. uh, Ethereum and silver, same type of parabolic behavior. You know, like they they really go gung ho. And look at that. It's like the same same thing. Wow. So I'm pretty sure that. I want to see, not because I believe necessarily in the Bitcoins and cryptos, but I believe in technical analysis and I want to see these fractals playing out. <laughs> okay. It, like, it reaffirms the, I've, I've never seen anyone draw this uh, analog before. So um, I'm so glad I reached out to you, Patrick, and I want to thank you so much for coming in. And uh, I learned from you today. I'm sure anyone that was here uh, as an attendee and watches this video later, um, are going to glean lots of pearls from you. So really nice meeting you and uh, would love to have you back down the road. Awesome. I really appreciate Del, uh, your time. Very appreciate it. All right. And, uh, you know, being my trading warrior brother, uh, you have to, you know, I have to have access to you 24 <laughs> seven. Patrick, what's this doing? Patrick, what's that doing? What do you think? What should we do? What would I have? La, 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 la. I'm just okay. kidding. Oh, it's, it's be my pleasure. That's how I get better. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kidding you, buddy. Okay. Uh, anyway, thanks so much, man. Uh, you know, I hope that pips uh, continue to rain down on you and the people who work with you and that uh, you remain untouched by this virus and have a great uh, fall and winter trading season. I look forward to doing this with you again down the road. Excellent. Thanks, All guys. All right, everyone. That's Patrick Kareem at Bad Charts One on Twitter. Talk to you later. And Ciao. remember, guys, uh, don't just count your silver coins, your junk silver, your bullion, your crypto. Count your blessings. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios for Turnaround Tuesday. Thanks again, buddy. Yeah, bye, man. <laughs>